Hello YouTube, Fela here, back for another in-depth review, this time for Transformers Headmasters. This review will have spoilers, so be warned. Um, to start off with, those of you who don't know what Transformers Headmasters is, I'm going to explain it to you. Um, Japan, uh, after Transformers finished, Japan they decided they wanted to make their own series. So they started with Transformers Headmasters, which is in continuity with all of Generation 1 except for the Rebirth. Essentially they took all of the Generation 1 continuity but ignored the Rebirth and decided to make their own explanation of Headmasters and Target Masters and such. Um, and it's the first uh, anime, it's the first, you know, Transformers show made by Japan and but it is still in continuity with Generation 1 so it's kind of you know, unique in a lot of ways. It does a lot of things that Transformers didn't. It does a lot of things. It's a men it's a, a mingling of concepts really between, you know, the American Transformers and Japan's sensibilities, I guess, if you will. Um it started airing on July third, nineteen eighty seven, ended on March twenty eighth, nineteen eighty eight, and had thirty five episodes. Um just, I've got a whole list of notes here of stuff I want to talk about, so if I'm glancing down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, now, to start off with, the first thing that can be said about, that I have to say about the Headmasters is that all the characters are very, very different. Um, to, to just point an example, Galvatron is clearly not insane in Headmasters like he was in Generation 1, but really it can be extended to all the characters' personalities are unique to Headmasters, or at least unique to the Japanese continuities, which will, which at first glance will either immediately uh, alienate you from the series, or you just have to accept that for what it is. I was able to accept it for what it was, so but I could understand a lot of people being upset that. All the all the Generation One characters are acting completely different than they used to. Um, all right, the Headmasters are very different from what they are in Ameri in American continuity. In American continuity, it's a Transformer and a uh, Nebulon or human partner that transforms into their head. So it's really two beings that sort of combine into one. In the Japanese series. Uh, the smaller the smaller part that turns into the head is the transformer uh and the big body is a lifeless shell called the called the transtector which the head just attaches to and when they're in vehicle mode the the smaller body rides in the vehicle now that's that's very interesting it's an interesting way to take it uh and there's reasons why that's good and there's reasons why that's or there's uh things that can be said for both versions on the one hand in the japanese version you don't really have that sort of identity crisis thing going on where when you really think about the american headmasters it gets a little weird about you know who's who and, and well now do they have to spend the, the rest of their entire lives <coughs> together and things like that so there's none of that, but at the same time it kind of defeats the purpose of, like in the American version I liked that the Headmasters were the cooperation of human and uh, Transformer, you know, cooperating together to be more powerful, you know, faster reaction times and such. Whereas there's really no good reason for the Headmasters to be stronger than all the other Transformers as they clearly are. Um, while I'm talking about the Headmasters, I'm going to go on and talk about uh, they have other unique powers other than just, you know, being in general stronger. Uh, they have telepathy and, in one case, telekinesis, which is a bit odd, but it's kind of cool at the same time because I guess they're Headmasters and so they're, it would sort of make sense that they have, you know, mental psychic powers. Um, Although, I think all Transformers should be able to communicate telepathically, by which I mean with radio signals or some such, you know, comm signals, but that's beside the point. 
But there's something else that the headmasters can do, which is when things start to get really silly and very Japanese, they have this ability called Cross Head On, where they pretty much all their headmas all their head units, excuse me, jump off and they all go onto a different body and that makes them more powerful, which makes no sense to me. And then they and then they further enhance that by having and <laughs> by having an ability where they essentially all just jump up and join hands and they just glow with energy and and revitalize all their power and by the end of the series this this ability has grown so powerful that in their transtectors they jump up and hold hands and it causes them to glow with energy and able to shoot energy for no reason it's probably the thing I like least about headmasters is that just the whole concept is silly Especially at the end, everybody defeats <laughs> uh, Scorponok at the end by all holding hands together. Uh, it's just weird. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say about the Headmasters. Um, ah, Megazeric or Scorponok or whatever you want to call him. Is he the best Decepticon leader ever? Maybe. I mean, it's pretty impressive. He he <laughs> blows up Cybertron. He blows up Mars. He leads the the Decepticons across a universe-wide uh, search for energy, which apparently he's success he's fairly su successful at. Even though the Decepticons are, even though the Autobots defeat him at some points, um, he's definitely more effective than Megatron or, or Galvatron and. Any series, really. Well, in any Generation 1 continuity series. Um, speaking of which, when he destroyed Mars, they made a big deal of pointing out that if Mars got destroyed, the debris would pelt Earth and cause tons of damage. But they, Mars gets destroyed, and they never mention that again, so that's kind of odd. Um, while I'm talking about the Decepticons, I'll talk about Six Shot who is, like, the ultimate badass until the end of the series. I mean, he kills Ultra Magnus, he kills, uh, in a flashback, he kills uh, one of Chrome Dome's good friends, Jack, and then he kills another friend of his, Abel. He's just, like, killing people left and right. He's completely badass. And then in the last few episodes, all of a sudden, he gets stranded on a planet with Daniel, and they become best friends forever, and... It's weird, and it makes no sense, and it comes out of nowhere. I mean... If it was any other of the Decepticons, I could almost accept it, but being as it was Six Shot, who killed Ultra Magnus in front of Daniel's eyes, and Daniel immediately trusts him and starts saying, No! He's good! Really, he has a good heart! No! He doesn't have a good heart! He killed Chrome Dawn's best friends and Ultra Magnus! He's a bad guy! Ah, just silly. Um, where should I go next? I'm going to stop for right now. See you in part two.